I think our parents were more hesitant. It just hasn't dawned on them quite yet that this is our home. At this stage in our life, since it's just the two of us, this space seems perfectly, perfectly fine and it's more than big enough for what we need. Mm -hmm. It's about 140 square feet. So I don't have to worry about putting down roots in one permanent location. We're still young, we love to travel, and this house gives us that opportunity. I didn't have to get rid of too much stuff. I definitely did. I think we made probably seven full car loads to Goodwill. We always get the questions like, how do you manage in a space like this? Well, I cook in the kitchen. I work on the computer and I'm a freelance 3D artist, so this is my workspace. I sleep in the loft. I shower in my bathroom. I'm doing exactly the same thing as everybody else. It's just I don't have a lot of that open space. <laughs> he definitely is the king of the tiny castle. He even has his own special little bathroom. You can see right over here, there is a little kitty doorway. And he can do his business. And then it also kind of keeps the smells in there. <laughs> Melissa is a 3D modeler and animator, so we actually made the plans ourselves. The whole idea of the, the tiny house, part of it is we ended up figuring out that we had spent $58,000 in rent in four years. The, the house itself was around $20,000. And the entire solar setup was about $12,000. So we have just over one kilowatt of power collection right here. And then we have a big long cable running underneath the house that goes to the solar inverter. We have the battery cables that run over and go into our battery box here. They're sealed lead acid. Being in Washington State, the clouds definitely prevent the solar panels from picking up as much power as they could. And so during the winter, we usually end up spending about a dollar a day in electricity. So here we